Otrimi and his Mutate compadres offer up a ton of new and unique abilities that are sure to have your playgroup saying, hey, how does that work with Mutate again? At least once per game. Hello everyone and welcome to another Commander Tactics Deck Tech. My name's Pope. With Ikorian Commander 2020 settled in, I wanted to brew a deck around the newest mechanic to grace our tables, and that is Mutate. Our commander for the Mutate-centric conglomeration will be the face card from the Commander 20 Mutate deck, and that's Otrimi the Ever Playful. Otrimi felt like it would be able to work so well with the Soul Tie playstyle, as well as bring all the Commander exclusive cards to synergize with our Ikoria cards, and that was the main reason that I picked him to lead this deck. Otrimi is a 6-6 Nightmare Beast, costing 3 generic, a black, green, and blue, so 6 total CMC. But he does bring with him the ability to mutate for only one generic black, green, and blue, so 4 CMC. If you're not familiar with what mutate is, it is an alternate casting cost that when it is cast you target a non-human creature you own, then those creatures mutate becoming one super creature. Without diving too deep into all the rules because there are a ton, when you mutate a creature you choose to put it on top or on bottom of the stack of creatures making it become that chosen creature if it's on top, or if you put it on bottom, then you're simply giving the mutated stack its abilities and keywords and nothing else. Mutate still must pay commander tax as well, but it does allow our 6 CMC commander to come out on turn 4 if we have the mana ready. Otrimi has trample, and whenever Otrimi or the creature Otrimi is mutated onto deals damage, we get to bring back any mutate creature card from our yard straight to our hand. Of course, with this deck, since we really are focusing in on that mutate mechanic and our commander is all about it, then this deck can be broken down into a very simple three-part story. Number one, we need our mutate creatures. We need Otrimi to get them back from the graveyard for us, and we need to be able to mutate our stuff to get those activated abilities. But along with all those mutate creatures, we also need carriers for those mutate creatures. That's why we're going to have lots of other creatures with low CMCs, but with abilities and keywords to make the mutate creatures very, very powerful. And then, since we are putting all of our eggs into one basket with our mutate creatures, we need to make sure we have tons of ways to protect all of our powerhouses. This deck comes in at about $250 and includes a ton of new cards, so if you're looking for a deck to make that includes all of these awesome new mutate spells, this is the one for you. But without any further ado, let's dive in, starting things off with all of our awesome mutate creatures that we're going to be running. Getting the show started with Boneyard Lurker, Trumpeting Gnar, and Baracus Apex of Forever. A quick note here before we go too far. I included all of the comic book art styles for these cards in this deck tech. That's because they are just incredible. The prices below each of the cards in this deck tech though do reflect the normal frames, not these awesome comic book styles, but I love them so much and just had to include them. But moving on, each of these multicolored creatures is going to mutate to do some sort of supporting ability. Boneyard Lurker says whenever it mutates, we get to return a target permanent card from our graveyard to our hand. So with Boneyard Lurker in play, we can bring back mutate creatures as well. Trumpeting Gnar for 5 mana, it's mutate cost. Whenever this creature mutates, we get to create a 3-3 beast creature token. It's also important to note that Trumpeting Gnar can come down for just 1 green and blue and just simply be our, our house, our carrier. We get a 3 CMC creature, then on turn 4 we can cast our commander targeting Trumping Gnar and getting that 3-3 three, three beast creature token. So just make sure you're not limiting your resources and trying to force the mutate when you could just play it as a standalone creature. And then Brockus, 2 black, green, blue, can be mutated for 5 CMC as well, and it says trample, but we can cast Brockus Apex of Forever from our graveyard if we use its mutate ability. This is incredible because we'll be able to constantly be bringing it back and we don't have to use Otrimi's ability on it. Next up, we have three removal and control mutate creatures with Gem Razor, Dirge Bat, and Sawtusk Demolisher. Gem Razor for only one green green, so three mana. We can mutate it with Reach and Trample, and we get a 4 4 creature that says whenever this creature mutates, we get to destroy any artifact or enchantment and opponent controls. And Aura Shards on a mutate creature had to go into this deck because that is just such a powerful ability. Dirge Bat costing two black black to come down by itself but it has 4 black black to flash flying mutate. Whenever this creature mutates, we get to destroy any target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. 
that flash ability with the mutate cost is so strong because not only could it give us the ability to block a flyer at flash speed but also can destroy a creature in the process and then sawtust demolisher four green green or mutate for three and a green sawtusk has trample and whenever this creature mutates we get to destroy any target non-creature permanent that means that Sawtusk can absolutely target lands even. I love this card that it is staying very tried and true to what is green, like Terracidon or Beast Within, destroying a permanent to give something a 3-3 green creature token. Then we have two more creatures that are going to mutate and tear down our opponents a little bit more with Cavern Whisper and Chittering Harvester. Cavern Whisperer for three black to mutate it has menace and whenever this creature mutates we make each opponent discard a card. That discard can definitely add up especially if we're able to mutate this two or three times in one turn. And then Chittering Harvester for five and a black by itself or four and a black to mutate. Whenever this creature mutates each opponent has to sacrifice a creature. A very solid way to get around those pesky indestructibles or hex proofs. Chittering Harvester is going to help us make that happen. And then rounding out our mutant team, we have two of my favorite mutate creatures with Auspicious Sterics and Mind Leecher. Auspicious Sterics says for four and a green, you can cast it, or five and a green, we can mutate it. Whenever this creature mutates, we exile cards from the top of our library until we exile X permanents, where X is the number of times that this creature has mutated. Then you get to put those permanents directly onto the battlefield. If you get to mutate Auspicious Sterics onto a creature and then hit it with two or three more mutates, we are going to have an insane amount of permanents on our board. We're going to ramp land. We're going to have all of our enchantments and creatures coming out. It is such a strong effect. And then Mind Leecher out of the Commander set, four black black to cast, four and a black for mutate, has flying, and says whenever this creature mutates, exile the top card of each opponent's library face down. You may look at and play those cards for as long as they remain exiled. Being such a fan of Atali, I love that Mind Leecher has a very similar effect, but I do have a major gripe about this card. Mind Leecher says you may play those cards for as long as they remain exiled. What it doesn't say is that you may spend mana as though it were any color to cast those spells. The upside to Mind Leecher is that we can play the lands that we steal from our opponent. The downside is that if they are in a color that we do not have, we simply can't even cast those spells. So if we run into any opponent running red or white, there's a good chance we just won't even be able to cast those spells, which is just a huge bummer given we got to use this awesome ability. But now that we've got to see all of our awesome mutate creatures, let's take a look at the foundation that we are going to be mutating onto with all of our awesome carrier creatures that have so many great keywords and abilities. Starting things off with three one cost creatures with Birds of Paradise, Slippery Bogle, and Gadul Lurker. Having one drops that have helpful abilities are great for all of our mutate creatures that want to come down on turn two or three, and then of course for our commander to come in on turn four. Birds of Paradise not only can be mutated onto, but can also tap for mana to help us get to our commander even quicker. Slippery Bogle has Hexproof, which is so important for our mutate creatures because we can't let them get removed because we want to build them up bigger and bigger, maximizing the amount of mutate triggers for each one we cast. And Dual Lurker for only one blue, it can't be blocked. Otrimi needs to get in and deal combat damage in order for its ability to trigger and of course some of our other ones have the same effect so we want to make sure we can be unblocked. Next up we have a couple two cost creatures with Solana Ledgewalker and Baleful Strix. Solana Ledgewalker has Hexproof which is already amazing but it also can't be blocked except by creatures with flying so it has a type of flying built in. Solana is the perfect carrier for Otrimi, getting in there, getting to do damage, and can't be the target of spells or abilities from our opponents. And then Baleful Strix, for only blue and a black, we get the two cost bird, has flying, and has death touch, and whenever it enters the battlefield, we get to draw a card. So much of an upside for only two mana, and then we can of course mutate all of our best stuff onto it. And then a couple more utility creatures that we're going to play that can also be mutated onto with Dryad of the Elysian Grove and Poliwog Symbiote. Dryad of the Elysian Grove, just one of the best cards of the past few sets. 
You may play an additional land on each of your turns. That's already amazing. But on top of that, lands you control are every basic type in addition to their other types. This card not only is going to help us ramp, it's going to help us color fix, and of course, we can then mutate our best stuff onto it and still have those awesome abilities. And Polywog Symbiote for only one and a blue. Each creature spell you cast costs one less to cast if it has a mutate. That ability alone would make this card pretty good. But then, it has whenever you cast a creature spell, if it has mutate, you get to draw a card and discard a card. The beautiful thing about that is that we can then pitch our mutate creatures to the yard if we want and immediately get them back with Otrimi thanks to his ability. And the icing on the cake for Polywog Symbiote is that it got the awesome Godzilla treatment, so go check that out. That's the baby Godzilla. And then, of course, we have three bomb carriers that can come up late game, get mutated onto, and do incredible things with Moldrotha the Gravetide, Nyx Bloom Ancient, and Villas Broker of Blood. Moldrotha the Gravetide, arguably one of the best commanders of the past two to three years, costs six CMC to get onto the field, but it says during each of your turns, you may play up to one permanent card of each permanent type from your graveyard. This means enchantment artifact land creature it is just so so powerful there's no way we couldn't run it in this deck and then nyx bloom ancient coming out of theros beyond death another incredible addition to commander has trample and says if you tap a permanent for mana it produces three times as much mana instead i mean what else is there to say about nyx bloom ancient just an absolutely incredible card and then lastly, Villas Broker of Blood, one of my favorite cards coming out of the past few sets for five and triple black, so a little restrictive on the casting cost. We get a Flying Demon. For a black, we pay two life. Target creature is going to get minus one, minus one until the end of turn. So it's got removal built in. Then, whenever you lose life, you get to draw that many cards. Each time we use that activated ability, we are putting minus one, minus one onto a creature, drawing two cards and losing two life. And that is just so much card draw that we can dump out for almost no mana. And of course, to boot, we can mutate stuff onto Villas, fly in, deal big damage, and have awesome effects. And then, of course, with all these awesome mutated creatures we have constructed, we need to make sure we have tons of ways to protect them and keep them out of harm's way. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to make them indestructible. And that's why we're going to be running Dark Steel Mirror, Stuffy Doll, and Dark Steel Plate. Dark Steel Mirror, a three cost artifact creature with 01 stats, simply says Dark Steel Mirror is indestructible. This isn't that exciting for three mana, but the, the moment you think about casting this on turn three and then mutating Otrimi onto it on turn four, we now have a 6 6 indestructible trample that is going to get us back cards from our graveyard, and that is just so, so powerful. Stuffy Doll for five CMC comes down, and when it enters the battlefield, we choose a player. Stuffy Doll is indestructible, so there's that indestructible again. And whenever Stuffy Doll is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to the player that we chose. Then it has the upside that we can tap it to deal one damage to itself. But the reality is we're going to cast this, and then we're going to mutate a big body on top of it and start crashing into our opponents to deal damage not only to the opponent we're attacking, but also the one that we chose when it entered. Stuffy Doll can be a huge political move. You choose one opponent and then you convince another opponent to let you hit them in order to deal that damage across the table as well. It is such a fun card. And then Dark Steel Plate. This equipment for three mana comes down. We can equip it to a creature for two cost. It gives that creature indestructible and Dark Steel Plate is indestructible itself. Ensuring our mutate creatures do not get destroyed is very pivotal for making this deck function. Two more ways we can make that happen is with Asceticism and Heroic Intervention. Asceticism and Enchantment for three green green says creatures you control can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control. So it gives all of our creatures hexproof. Then for one in a green, we can regenerate a target creature. I just want to take a quick second to talk about how regenerate will work with our mutate creature. We would pay one in a green to regenerate our mutate creature. This mutate creature is one entity, so all the creatures aren't separate. We don't have to regenerate each and every one of them. We just have to regenerate the one mutate creature. This is going to help us keep that creature from being destroyed if a board wipe comes down. 
and is just a very strong second ability that is going to help keep our creature safe. And then of course we're also running Heroic Intervention. This instant for only one in the green, permanent we control gain hexproof and indestructible until the end of turn. So for some reason it's going to get targeted, we can cast Heroic Intervention to stop it, and if a board wipe comes down we can make them indestructible. Just really can't stress enough how important it is that we maintain a board state with a mutate creature because if we do lose that mutate creature we get set way back and have to rebuild and that can take a couple turns. But sometimes one of the best defenses is to simply have a backup ready to go. And that's why we're going to be running three clone abilities. Cloning with mutate is kind of crazy. Whenever you clone a mutated creature, you are cloning the entire stack or the entire pile of creatures that have been mutated up to that point. So whenever a clone enters the battlefield, it is entering as that entire mutated stack, which is absolutely bonkers. But we have stunt double that can come in at flash speed for only 4 mana, 3 and a blue. And whenever it enters the battlefield, it becomes a copy of any creature on the battlefield. This means we can flash this in if our creature is about to get targeted removal and bam, we now have a fully replicated mutated creature ready to go. Do keep in mind though that the legendary rule will still be in effect, so if we have a legendary creature on top of the mutate stack, we cannot copy it, otherwise one of them will have to be destroyed. And our next mutate is Sakashima the Imposter. This reprint coming in from Mystery Booster says as Sakashima the Imposter comes into play, you may choose a creature in play. If you do, it comes into play as a copy of that creature, except its name is still Sakashima the Imposter. It's still legendary and it gains for two blue blue, we can return Sakashima to our owner's hand. Just another great clone effect that also has the ability to bounce itself back in case it would get removed. And then lastly, Sahili's Artistry. For four blue blue, we get a sorcery that says choose one or both. Create a token that's a copy of target artifact. Or create a token that's a copy of target creature, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. So we definitely know from Sahili's Artistry that we are going to get a copy of our big mutated creature, but we could also get a ramp artifact, one of the other powerful artifacts on the table, or if our mutate creature is currently in an artifact on top, we can create a second copy of that mutated stack as well, which is just so incredibly powerful for only 6 mana. And then lastly, two more ways we can preserve our mutated powerhouse with Ghostly Flicker and Journey to Eternity. Ghostly Flicker says, for two and a blue we get an instant that exiles two target artifact creatures and or lands we control, then we return them back to the battlefield. Flickering a mutate creature means we remove it from play, and then when we return it back to play, each of the mutated parts is its own individual creature, and it is no longer a large single entity. Pretty niche scenarios will call to flicker our mutate creature, but we might need to use it on that just in case. And then journey to attorney for one black green enchant creature we control. Whenever the enchanted creature dies, we return it to the battlefield under our control. Then we return journey to attorney to the battlefield transformed as Atsul Cave of Attorney, which lets us tap it for any color of mana, or we can pay three black green to tap it and return any creature card from our graveyard street to the battlefield. If we do have Journey equipped to a creature and that creature dies, we then bring it back from the graveyard to the battlefield. But if it's a mutated creature, again we're bringing back each one of those pieces as separate entities, as individual creatures. But now that we've seen the full force of all the mutant creatures that we are going to be building, let's take a look at what else we have going on inside the 99. For our removal and control with this deck, we have a very solid 10 spells, either abilities or effects, going to help us take down anything on the board that we need to. Card draw is one of our best attributes about this deck. Tons of ways to keep our hands full. Ramp in this deck, we have it in the form of spells, mana rocks, creature abilities even, going to help us get all the land out. And then power level of this deck, I really just couldn't put my finger on it. I found this deck to be very powerful in some games and in some games just a complete dud, so the inconsistency has me a little unsure. I want to definitely playtest it a little more before I give it a power level, but I would absolutely say for now it falls somewhere in the range of a 5 to a 6, 6.5. In order to win with this deck, we can go down a few different avenues. 
The first approach is definitely just to keep mutating all of our creatures and get those mutate effects over and over again. It is going to drain our opponent's life, it's going to make them discard cards, and it is really just going to help us control the game and get the win. If that's not enough, we are going to build one huge beater and just swing in for maximum combat damage and maybe even get a commander damage win. But if that doesn't get the job done just yet, we are going to have a lot of recursion with things like Otrimi and Maldrotha. We're going to be able to just keep pulling things out of our graveyard over and over and over and keep going in for more and more damage. A few budget alternatives for this deck. We have Sidisi, Brood Tyrant, Glade Cover Scout, and Vampire Nighthawk. Sidisi, Brood Tyrant, a great way to get some cards into our graveyard. It's a body that we can mutate onto, and to boot, every time a creature goes into our graveyard from our deck, we get to create a 2-2 zombie, which then can be mutated onto. And that is very important that we always have a host to move a mutate creature onto. Glade Cover Scout, just a great entry, level 1 drop, has Hexproof, and Vampire Nighthawk, this 3 CMC creature has a ton of keywords on it, Flying, Death Touch, and Lifelink, making it a great mutate target to continue to gain us life, deal lots of damage, and have evasion. If you're looking to take this deck up a notch, I'd recommend Defense of the Heart, Questing Beast, and the Ley Line of Anticipation. Defense of the Heart is an enchantment reprinted in Mystery Booster, so it's at the lowest price it's been in a while, but it says, during your upkeep, if one of your opponents controls three or more creatures, you sack this enchantment, and then you search your library for two creature cards and put them straight into play. This means if an opponent ever has three creatures while this enchantment's out, we get to go get our two biggest and best creatures. I don't know, Villas and Nyx Bloom Ancient. For only four mana, you really can't beat that. And then Questing Beast for four mana, Vigilance, Death Touch, Haste, all the keywords we want can be blocked by creatures with power two or less. Damage can't be prevented, and whenever it deals damage to an opponent, we get to deal damage to a Planeswalker. This is just an all-around bomb, and again, can be mutated onto. And then lastly, Leyline of Anticipation. Having the ability to flash in mutate cards is extremely powerful, so something like Leyline or Vidalcan Ori are very, very good additions for this deck. But that brings us to the close of this Mutate Madness deck. Otrimi the Ever Playful, a great leader to this awesome new mechanic. I have played this deck multiple times and I find it to be very fun and always ends up doing things that it hasn't done yet. Granted, it's a commander deck so it's going to happen quite often. But let me know what did you guys think? Did I miss some good hosts, some good carriers? Are there some cards that I added that you would definitely never run? Let me know down in the comments section below. If you're new here, thanks so much for checking out the channel. And if you did enjoy this deck tech, make sure you show some love by hitting that like button. And if you want to know when our next deck tech goes live, you can click that little bell, hit that subscribe button, and you can expect a new video every Friday, if not sooner. If you missed it, we did reach the 1,000 subscriber mark, so thank you so much for everyone, and to celebrate, we've got a lot of things coming down the pipeline. We kicked off our Patreon, you can find us over there at Commander Tactics on Patreon if you want to support the channel more. If you're a Twitter user, head on over there, drop us a follow at EDH Tactics. We do giveaways all the time over there for arena codes and stuff like that. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you for the next one.